In the middle of lockdown, holed up in her English countryside home, Tori Amos found a way to go back in time, creating an album that may make you feel like the earth is quaking like it's 1992. My review of Ocean to Ocean is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Tori Amos holds a special place in the musical landscape of my life. I'm a fan of a lot of artists, but no other act has probably received as much fan activity from me over the span of the last 30 years. From her very first solo album, 1992's Little Earthquakes, I was hooked. Back at that time, I was a card-carrying member of her official fan club. I still have copies of the Upside Down fanzine, and uh, a Christmas card from Tori and her team, and even an autographed picture of her on the wall here in the music room. I've seen her in concert more than a dozen times, and no other act has as many discs in my music collection as Tori Amos. Between albums, import singles, promo discs, rarities, and more, there's more than a hundred Tory CDs in my collection. To put that in perspective, Bob Dylan, whose legendary career spans over half a century, comes in second in terms of size in my collection. Ocean to Ocean is Tory's 16th full-length studio album. Obviously, it's been a long journey to this point, and in terms of the passage of time, Amos' groundbreaking debut, now three decades old, feels like a lifetime ago. And I mean that both for me as a fan and for Tory as an artist. We're both in very different places in our lives than when our relationship began. And while I'll admit that though my attention to her music may be less frequent between albums these days, every reunion does still feel like a conversation with an old friend. That's especially true when listening to her latest album. Sonically, Ocean to Ocean feels very much like the work of an artist that's come full circle. Over the past few decades, we've heard Tori experiment with all kinds of sounds and even genres. But here we have what seems like her least experimental work in years. Now, don't take that as a criticism. It isn't intended that way. In fact, that surface-level perception is deceiving when you consider how the album was actually created. Deceiving, but not surprising. This is, after all, very much a lockdown album. And like so many other artists creating music during this unprecedented period of time, Tori had to learn to work in isolation. To that end, her 2020 Christmastide EP was a sort of proof of concept. With that release, she discovered that she could indeed piece together new music with her bandmates, all working remotely from oceans away. So in that regard, this album was truly unlike any album she's recorded before. So it's interesting to see that under these conditions, her muse took her back to her roots. We haven't heard a collection of songs this reminiscent of Little Earthquakes and Under the Pink since, well... Little Earthquakes and Under the Pink. Right from the opening track, she seems to make that intention clear. Addition of Light Divided is about as old school Tori as you can get. The piano lines are in constant motion, and atop that we get Tori's trademark vocal counter melodies playing against the layered leads. It's a bold start to the album, to be sure. Still, as lush as it all sounds, it still lacks a strong melodic or lyrical hook, which ultimately keeps the song more earthbound than I'd hoped. Speaking with Trees comes up next on the album, a song most fans have probably spent some time with now as the first single. It's a song that finds Tori dealing with grief over the death of her mother in recent years, but I wouldn't characterize it as a sad song. I think it's decidedly about learning to move on, about discovering how to maintain that sort of spiritual connection with those we've lost, and in this case, through nature. I really love the percussive sound of the piano here, paired with the almost tribal-sounding drums. There's a short but compelling bridge that shows up late in the track, almost like an afterthought. I kind of wish it had been longer and earlier in the song, because it feels like a missed opportunity worth exploring for at least a few measures more. There's a bit of a country flair to Devil's Bane on track three, and if anything, that makes it the most unusual track on the album. Make no mistake, though, it's one of the best as well. Here, Tori explores familiar themes of spirituality and sin, but letting the acoustic guitar shine instead of her ivories. Her organ instead lingers in the background, anchoring the track with a subtle hymn-like essence. I really love the guitar solo here as well. Again, a huge album highlight for me. Tori follows up one strong track with another with Swim to New York State. 
I would say this is arguably the most beautiful song on the album, with Tori letting her gorgeous piano drive the melody, augmented by exquisite orchestrations. Drawing on her lockdown experience, she taps into the kind of feelings of isolation many of us have felt over the past couple years. For Tori, it's a separation from her niece, living an ocean away. But for many, that seemingly daunting swim to New York could just as easily have been a distance across town, state, or country, where there may as well have been an ocean of separation anyway. It's powerful stuff. Next up on Spies, we get a song where I would say your mileage may vary. Tori has a long history of recording songs with odd inspirations. Here, she set out to create a lullaby-ish sort of song to help her daughter overcome her fear of the bats that were so common where they live. Clearly, that intention evolved into something a bit bigger than some of Tori's past oddities. And while I do like the energy and the walking bass line that propulsively drives the track, I think the song ultimately wears out its welcome about halfway through. With a six-minute runtime, Spies is the longest track on the album by nearly 75 seconds. To my taste, it needed to be much shorter. The repetition of the first verse three times is unnecessary, to be sure. Bookending the track with those lyrics makes sense, but the reprise in the middle feels redundant. Now, one of the main catalysts for Tori creating this album, beyond just the isolation of the pandemic, was watching the events of the world unfold from that space of feeling trapped. Specifically, Tori has mentioned in interviews how the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol impacted her and how she used her feelings of despondence and frustration as a creative energy in her songwriting. On the title track of Ocean to Ocean, she comes closest to addressing those feelings lyrically, albeit still indirectly. It's fairly clear when she sings about what certain people do or don't give a goddamn about, she's got a lot on her mind. It was probably wise to favor ambiguity over specifics in the lyrics. It makes the track less pointed, perhaps, but it gives the song a more timeless quality. Next on Flowers Burn to Gold, we get one of the kinds of songs that have been a hallmark of Tori's discography since the very beginning. And if you've ever seen Tori in concert in a solo setting, just a girl at her piano, this track will hit you even harder. There's a real magic that happens in that setting, and it was a big part of what made Little Earthquakes so powerful. This track could have fit perfectly in that song cycle, and its beautiful melodies feel even more impactful without being spread across a band accompaniment. Yet another album highlight. Over the years, one of the artists Tori Amos has most been compared to is certainly Kate Bush. And on Metal Water Wood, she taps into that vibe more strongly than I think I've heard in a while. I really love the rhythmic interplay between the piano, drums, bass, and even the vocals. That being said, I'm not as much a fan of her repeated use of the phrase, be like water, on the choruses, if only because those are inescapably someone else's famous words. But if you had Bruce Lee quote on your Tori Amos bingo card, congrats. There's no doubt many of the songs on Ocean to Ocean feel like spiritual successors to Little Earthquakes, but only one song actually appears to reference that relationship. 29 years is both the song title and the span of time that has elapsed since the release of that iconic album. And where other songs here have seemed to pay musical homage to Tori's debut, 29 Years is more explicit lyrically. Here she sings, For 29 years, these victim tears, a song from my past. To 29 years, yes, we are free at last. It's a story about the journey, clearly. And she seems to suggest she's found that elusive truth she's been looking for. I must say, though, that if anything, the music harkens back more to Why Can't Tori Read than anything else. There's even some shades of the police here in the rock reggae rhythm and the sound of the guitar and bass. Not a musical reference I ever expected to make with a Tori Amos album. The penultimate track is called How Glass Is Made, and it's yet again a song that seems to speak from Tori's experience during lockdown. It's an expression of earned wisdom perhaps realization of which didn't happen until she was forced into artistic solitude with those feelings fueling her songwriting. She sings, In a year of earthquakes and those aftershocks, we learned how glass can break. Musically, this is once again a very old-school sound for Tori, especially the droning, distorted guitar on the bridge. Still, I must admit this is one of my least favorite tracks on the album. It doesn't linger in my consciousness much beyond the final notes. The closing track on the album is Birthday Baby, and though it seems odd to say, I think here is a song that sonically has echoes of a James Bond theme. 
Yes, it's subtle, but when you consider the similar direction Billie Eilish took on her recent cinematic outing, that vibe becomes even more present. The exotic feeling of the tango rhythms certainly reinforced this as well. At the same time, the happy birthday elements of the lyrics make it a little harder to connect with the track. Birthday Baby is another song on the album inspired by Tori's niece in New York, and in this case probably the one speaking most directly to her. On that level, it's very personal, and I can appreciate that, but perhaps more on a level of someone showing me the birthday card they received from a close friend and letting me read the inscription. That was thoughtful, I would say, but bereft of subject ambiguity, it's not a sentiment that connects with me. In the various interviews Tori has given in advance of the release of Ocean to Ocean, one comment she made stood out to me. Essentially, she stated that she's past the point of trying to make hit songs and is now just focused on making the music she feels like she needs to make. Honestly, I think she's been well past that point for quite a few years now, and it's hard to see how any of her recent albums could be confused as trying to court the mainstream. In fact, it seems to me that Tori Amos has built her career upon being more of a cult favorite than the darling of the MTV era, of the social media era, or any other era. Either you get it or you don't. And I do respect her for that. Still, for anyone that's been a fan for all these years, there's something very rewarding about hearing her return to the kind of music that endeared her to her audience from those intimate beginnings. I find it hard to believe that many fans of her music had their point of entry with albums like American Doll Posse or Night of Hunters. If I'm being honest, I'd never recommend starting with those either. This has definitely been a journey that I think is best experienced from the beginning. That being said, I think her 2021 release stands out as being simultaneously one of her most personal and most accessible albums in years. If you've never given her music a chance, this actually isn't a bad place to start. Not the best place, of course, but, you know, circle back to her 90s albums when you get a chance. So, I'm giving Ocean to Ocean by Tori Amos an X rating of 8 out of 10. It's easily her strongest album in years, and if she's an old friend you haven't connected with in a while, I think you'll be happy to get reacquainted. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.